I'm Joni Petrie and welcome to my YouTube channel. Well, today I want to talk about a great awakening and this does involve some amazing planetary aspects that I see coming, but specifically what this is all about that does give me these indications is the fact that Venus is about to go retrograde. Now Venus is the planet that goes retrograde the very least out of all the planets. Venus goes retrograde about every 18 months, but it stays retrograde for about 42 days. And when it goes retrograde in its back and forth cycle in a sign, it for the most part will stay in a sign for about four months. Now normally Venus is in a sign per only one month. So it makes a major, major impact in the sign that it goes retrograde in. But I want to tell you some amazing facts about Venus. Now I always have to remind everyone, I am a Vedic astrologer. I'm using the sidereal system of astrology, which pushes it back a sign from your Western tropical placements in astrology. So I'm looking at this Venus retrograde as being in the sign of Libra. And let me just say Venus will turn retrograde October 5th at about six degrees of Libra and it will turn direct November 16th at one degree of Libra, but it will stay in the sign of Libra from September 1st of this year, 2018, till January 1st of 2019, so for four months. Now let me tell you some amazing things about this retrograde cycle of Venus because it is different. And you know, many years ago, when I wrote my very first book, I did some extensive research on the retrograde cycles and particularly the Venus cycle because what I discovered was approximately about nine months after Venus went retrograde, there was always some unusual events concerning peace treaties or something where things came together where there was a balance, a healing. And let me just say this right off the bat, Venus being in Libra is going to bring some amazing opportunities for growth in healing and balance because that's what Libra is all about. Its symbol is the scales. So let me give you a few interesting indications about how this Venus retrograde, I believe, will heal mankind. And just to go back to some of the amazing, amazing peace treaties that happened approximately nine months after a Venus retrograde was around in World War I, there was the Treaty of Versailles and World War II, there was the peace agreement in Yalta then there was actually one that was the arms control agreement about Vietnam with Nixon. So these are just to name a few. But let me tell you about some amazing things that you may not know about the retrograde cycle of Venus. And one is that its cycle, when you chart its cycle in the heavens, when it goes through five retrograde cycles, it will form a pentagram in the sky. And that's pretty amazing. And so looking back, what I really discovered now is that astronomically, when we talk about Venus, Venus and Mercury, we can talk about them being an evening star or a morning star. And what that essentially means is when Venus will rise in the night sky, of course it's called an evening star. If you don't ever see Venus, it is a morning star because it's going to be in a position where during the day it comes out so you don't see it. So all of a sudden when Venus becomes an evening star, the ancients in ancient times used to think this was a huge indicator because for so long they didn't see Venus. And then all of a sudden they see Venus. 
So in ancient times, they used to say this was an indicator of war, but it actually, I don't think, you know, there was, maybe there were that many wars going on back then, but for today, it's not gonna necessarily be that every time it becomes an evening star there's, star, there's a major war that breaks out, but it's very, very, very significant. And let me tell you what I discovered concerning the fact that nine months, I knew there was something significant about nine months, that these treaties or events that cause peace or a change on the planet happen nine months after the Venus retrograde. We'll come to find out that Venus becomes an evening star and moves to a morning star it takes nine months. And let me tell you exactly about this because January 10th of this year of 2018, Venus became an evening star. And it will become a morning star where we no longer see it in the heavens October 25th this year. Consider that. January to February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, nine months. So that's the nine months significance. And of course you've got to consider that this is so symbolic because it's the gestation period of a human. And Venus does represent love. Venus does represent relationship. Bringing the man and woman together produces a baby. And this is where this all Venus thing comes together, how these symbols are actually so real in what they produce in our world. So, so looking at this, I want you to know that what Venus truly represents here, it's, it's a birthing process. And I believe there's so much that's about to transpire in this world that is a birthing process and we all have this incredible incredible opportunity during this time to awaken to something very very powerful that I'm going to inform you about right now now remember this pentagram let me tell you a little facts about a pentagram because it's pretty amazing that it produces this symbol in the sky but what is a pentagram all about and the pentagram, of course, has the five sides or five points. It's the five-pointed star. And, and here are some of the facts I'm, I'm going to tell you. Venus, Venus uh, traces almost a perfect pentagram across the night sky every eight years. Okay? I find it really interesting also if you go back to the last sign that Venus went retrograde in 18 months ago, it was in Pisces. And now Venus is going to go retrograde in Libra. So every time it goes retrograde, it will be eight signs difference. So Pisces to Aries to Taurus, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra is eight signs. So there's this other symbology with the interesting fact that it deals with eight, which is the number of transformation and change, if you think of it relative to the eighth house. So here's some other things I find that's interesting. Uh, that, that Venus, it is also called the Roman Lucifer, which is the morning star. Remember the morning star is called Lucifer and it is the bringer of knowledge. So that's something that the pentagram is known for. Pythagoras used the pentagram to sim symbolize the five elements, which were idea, heart, air, earth, and water. Okay. And the symbol means five chambered. So this is the pentagram. And the pentagram is, has always been ascribed to the truth. If you consider that in Hebrew, it's a star of David. So this is what's considered the truth. Now, the pentagram is a symbol for fortune. And it was found 
in Egyptian statues as well. Now remember in the tarot cards, the pentagram is the disc or the coins, or if we want to call it the, the coins, which today in the, in the regular card deck has become the diamond. But you'll always see the pentacles. They are described with a pentagram in them. So this also relates to Freemasonry. They always use the symbol for the pentagram. And here's another thing. Conspiracy theorists believe that Washington was built in a pentagram by having the five streets that form the pentagram. But it is definite that the Pentagon has five sides. This is no theory. This is a fact and there's no coincidences. So looking at this, and you can also look at, I'm sure some of the religious zealots will go to town with this saying, oh my God, it represents Satan. And, and you know, it's the, the inverted pentagram represents Satan and evil and all of that. But that came way after the beautiful symbol that the pentagram represented spiritual knowledge, spirituality. And I think possibly them inverting it represents the reversal of the high powered spirituality of this. This is all represented by Venus. Venus whole cycle forms a pentagram. I think this is, this is fabulous. So this powerful symbol represents the power of Venus. And there are some other interesting things that I think you might want to know about how it is used for this can be used for the power to transform for our highest good. I don't want you to go into all that satanic nonsense. This is not what this is about. This is about the power to heal the heart. And let me explain that. Because Venus is, represents the heart chakra. In Vedic astrology, we look at the chakras as our own little universe within us. And the, the root chakra is Saturn and the way that it's, it, it works with our own little planetary system within us is according to our solar system from the slowest moving planet visible to the naked eye to the fastest. So the root chakra Saturn, the reproductive chakra is Jupiter and the solar plexus is Mars and the heart chakra is Venus, representing love. The throat chakra is Mercury, the third eye is the sun, and the crown chakra is the moon, from the slowest to the fastest. And these planets rule our chakras in our bodies. So this is Venus deals with the love principle, the love chakra. So this is about what we're here to discover now. And I want you to be aware that these planets represent the divine forces for those that can read the stars and the planets. Let me just tell you, there's so many deep messages. For example, let me just say this. In Vedic astrology, the planets, astrology, is rooted back in the ancient Vedas in India, that's why we've coined the, the name Vedic astrology, but it's actually called Jyotish. And Jyotish means science of light. And in the ancient Indian Vedas, astrology is part of the body of man with the limbs of the Vedas. Jyotish are the eyes of the Vedas. That is the part of the body it represents, which indicates it gives us light. It gives us sight in the darkness. So let me give you a little bit of some more interesting things of what this is going to bring, because this is really predicting major, powerful events that are about to transpire into the future. Let me show you what's about to happen. In the year of 2020, Jupiter and Saturn will conjoin in Capricorn. In the year of 2021, they will conjoin, excuse me, in the 
In the year of 2020, they're going to conjoin in Sagittarius. In the year of 2021, they're going to conjoin together Jupiter and Saturn in Capricorn. But what's interesting is this is exactly where they came together, 1960 and 61. 1960, Jupiter and Saturn came together in Sagittarius. 1961, they came together in the sign of Capricorn. And if you think back to the elections during those years with the Kennedy elections and him being reelected and the whole transformation of the 60s, something very similar is going to transcend and happen. But we have got to change. There is so much that the stars are telling us. This Jupiter-Saturn conjunction, which happens every 20 years, the fact that it's come back to the same signs of 1960 and 61 is extraordinarily symbolic. And let me go further than that to tell you what also is about to transpire because this is so important with world events. And what's happening right now is there is so many fanatics going wild with politics and religion. And that's basically what Sagittarius and Capricorn are all about. And what this represents is there must be a healing coming from the heart, healing the planet. The thing that is tearing this planet apart right now is not nuclear energy. It's not going to be nuclear energy. It's the anger, the fanaticism, and resentments of the people that are so polarized right now that they're destroying each other. This is what I see happening. And that is what's happening now is merely a reflection of what's within them, what we see out there with all the events. So another thing I want you to know about these world events, it's hitting a peak right now, and here we go. Because, let me just remind everyone, where Rahu and Ketu are are where the eclipses happen. They go through all 12 signs every 18 and a half years. So when, right now, we have Rahu in Cancer, K2 in Capricorn. They're going to shift where Rahu's going to be in Gemini and K2 is going to be in Sagittarius. This shift will occur March of 2019. They will stay in these signs for 18 months, year and a half till September of 2020. 20, 2020. So what you're going to see in that year and a half period is something catastrophic. Why? Let me go back to 1945. Last time that the nodes Rahu and Ketu were in Sagittarius, Gemini and Sagittarius. 1945, bombing of Hiroshima. 18 and a half years later, 1963, assassination of Kennedy. 18 and a half years later, 1982, the onset of the AIDS virus, which killed more people globally than anything ever. 2001, 18 and a half years later, we know what happened September 11th. So we have this reoccurring. This is going to happen, begin March of 2019 and last till September of 2020. So a lot is coming up here. This Venus retrograde is very, very, very important involving this whole nine month gestation period afterwards following. So if there's a takeaway I want you to take away from, from what I'm saying right now, now is the time to truly come from the heart energy. This is what Venus means. This is what the Venus retrograde to me means. And I want you to know that it all involves this alienation and people feeling so separate and not feeling a sense of love. And from all of my years as being an astrologer, one thing I have discovered deeply through astrology, but this is where what I'm gonna say hits home and is the truth. Those people in the world that feel so angry, disheart disheartened, but most of all resentful about things, 
This stems from the fact that when they came into the world, on some level, at some point in their life, they felt unwanted and unloved. And this may have something to do with their family dynamic, their mother, their father, but trust me, it's there. So the fact is, the only thing that truly heals is love. Those people that feel this this anger, this resentment, no love, disconnect. It truly comes from the fact that they were never felt wanted. And this relates to the fact that they're gonna have dysfunctional relationships throughout their life because they don't know how to love. They don't know what love is. It was never taught to them. So in the advent of all of this, what evolves is dysfunctional relationships and then they begin to blame the world out there the world out there is causing this they had nothing to do with it but essentially if they can reclaim their heart energy and come from a place of love and that means going out and reconnecting with people because this isolation and loneliness and anger only breeds more fear and anger but when they take back their ability to love and understand what true unconditional love is, they will bring together others and the reflection out there will not be where people are attacking or hating because what you, what you see out there is essentially a reflection of what's within us, all of us. We have to see and use this as an opportunity to better understand where we're coming from. Realize that cultures that are the happiest and live the longest are cultures where they have community, where they care about each other. They give a sense of love and connection and togetherness. So we have to bring this back together and feel a sense of love, togetherness, and have a support system through other people. The, the internet and social media, being on computers does not help this. We have to physically come together. We have to feel a connection. We have to feel community. And this will change the world. And if you can't imagine this, then I want you to really go deep within and see where it is that you have not experienced the feeling of love. Because if you, if you feel this, then you don't feel like you're worthy of love. And if you don't feel worthy of love, you're never going to have a happy relationship. There won't be happiness. And we're all seeking that. And this is the greatest lesson. Venus has this message for us. And now is the time. And actually, not that I'm using this to talk about my conference, but I planned my astrological conference called Future of Astrology because Venus stationed to go retrograde October 5th, which is when I'm having my conference. So I want you to go out, whatever it is that you feel connected to other people, what you love in life, connect to others, whether it's astrology or not astrology, whatever that is, and bring together community and feeling and come from the heart. This energy will heal the planet. And that's what Venus is here to do. So no, no more blaming. No more blaming. It's now time to come from a place of love and acceptance. And this will truly not only heal the planet, but particularly your life, and you will feel loved. Because what you put out there, you get back. So this is the most transformational time, I think, now, never before, on planet Earth um, to be awakened. So with that, I'd like to close. This is all in the process of Venus and its retrograde process. What an opportunity. And so with that, I'd like to close. If you'd like to learn more, if you would sign up for my newsletter on galacticcenter.org, you will get written transcripts of all that I'm saying. I send out news, free newsletters with all of this information. So once again, that's galacticcenter.org. And don't forget, if you're an astrology lover, come to my conference. We are going to be talking about the future of astrology. 
and it's October 5th through the 7th, go to the website, which is www.futureofastrology.com. And my website is galacticcenter.org. Thank you for listening and happy Venus retrograde.